ஏற்படுதா yeah yeah i just got a minor surgery done we had a got of uh, maybe uh, mubarak would like to interact at the base today or tomorrow mubarak uh, mubarak can you hear me hello i think he is not there he is still online no, but uh, yeah 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 i think he's muted himself yeah, yeah. okay one sec box by sure yeah animesh some there are some network issues animesh hello hello yeah Ah, hello, Mubarak. Just yeah, wanted Nimesh. to tell if you wanted, you maybe you would like to collect some feedback or something today or tomorrow. How is it? Yeah, yeah. tomorrow Plan I will collect feedback. Day. Tomorrow, right? Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Yeah. And I have right. shared the recordings to Venu. Yeah, I I I see that. I mean, um, recording and it's working. I mean, I I'm able to play those recordings, so no issues. Yeah, that's that's really nice. I mean. Oh, okay, fine, fine. Recording. Yeah. Yeah, if something we have missed out, we can just go through them. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, I think I will re uh, request you to keep these videos only with you, so not to distribute sure. it to others. <laughs> sure, definitely. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have LMS platform, but uh, there are some issues. So we are working on that. Uh, once it is fixed, uh, I will be uploading yeah. the recordings in LMS, and I will be giving you access to them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The login. Yeah, yeah. All right then. Yeah. Thanks, Mubarak. I'll get it started then. Yeah. Bye bye. So let me share my screen. Yeah. So when we're just confirming, if you can see my screen. Hello, Venu. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Vinny? Hi. Hi, Animesh. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I can hear you now. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. So you know, we, let's uh, get started for some more. Uh, Build concept, and before that, I would like uh, you to just recall that we discussed about uh, some of the programming, you know, techniques from the build perspective. So we understood about the the programmer's view of uh, the EXE and also the system's view of EXE, and we saw that uh, you could start. The program's uh, extension by using some attributes, and yes. you could call some functions, and you can you know manipulate them. So the advantage of having systems uh, view of an exe is uh, always good for developers, right? Yeah. Typically for hardware engineers who would like to look for a lot of extensions like this, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. 
just to extend that example, we would also like to uh, get into how do you write a program in C without mean? What is the need of it? And so and so on. You know, so it's very easy for anyone to know that where your program starts, right? So anybody can grab a source code and say, this is the mean and then get yes. started, right? Yeah. yeah, but sometimes you want to give some kind of primary security, number one, that you know you may have a very, very large uh, you may not want to use main itself as an entry point, but some other function than you what you like to, you know. Uh, very good case studies are these, you know, the bootloaders or system programs which we write, drivers, or we write some kind of programs which are like kernel. They don't, have main, you know? they don't have main. Okay. And uh, that's, that's, uh, that's the same thing which we all we can achieve so you know in such scenarios we can have programs where we can ask the linker scripts to place my position or the position to be at a place where we want to um, animation so, your, uh, the, the voice is breaking animation i couldn't oh, okay you're not able to hear me yeah some some issue um, i, I can okay. some time but it kind of breaks in, in the... I will try to, you know, reconnect. Maybe I have some Wi-Fi oh. challenge. Let me try to see if it works for you again. Oh. How about now? I'm just trying to be near to the... Yeah, the... This, 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 this is this better. better? Yeah. This is better? Yeah. All right, all right. Okay, thanks. So, you know, what I was trying to say is that, you know, the, the program which we write, we need to have some absolute proof programming starting addresses, right? If you remember, you know, when you, uh, you know, write a C code, most of the time main is hard coded. So main must be present. There is no other choice for you to, you know, get away from the main. So that's one of the thing which, which is always a big challenge for us, right? Right, yes. yes. And if you want to, you know, change that structure or style, then it's possible only when you write your own linker script. So it's possible for you to have a program placed in a unique location where we would like to have this. Okay, let's take a small example of this my app kind of a program. I hope you can see the screen. Yeah, I can, I can see. Yeah. So just for a demonstration sake, what we are doing is we aren't using any uh, uh, header and we aren't using any uh, main function, but it is like my main or something, okay. or maybe you know we can say that this is my uh, start underscore code start code, okay. and you know then I am trying to use a variable here. Maybe I'll change the variable to be say something like ninety nine. And then I'm trying to increment it over. So A++ says that you are trying to increment the value. Mm -hmm. And then there is a way to exit the program. So it's an assembly code, which is equivalent to raise a exit, you know. Okay. The reason is I'm not using any header file. Yeah. Yes. So I don't expect to use any standard library. And uh, then naturally I need to use a linker script. Now in Linux, linker scripts are made with an extension called as .lds. Okay. Okay, and linker script may not uh, be very difficult to learn. It contains the information about the parts of my program where we have to place it. So, you know, there may be memory sections, there may be code sections. So you can see there are three major macros. So one of the macro talks about the output format, it means the machine, the binary, and the file type, all of them are ELF for a particular architecture. Mm -hmm. Then we mentioned the architecture type to be of I386. It could be another architecture also. Maybe it could be an ARM. It could be in X86, IA64, and so and so on. Mm -hmm. Now here is where the trick is. You know, we need to put the mean entry point over here. So I can mention the entry point and I can say that I have a my app C file 
and you can see this is the code as start underscore code. So in this entry point, uh, what I would do is I'll remove this my main and I'll place this as uh, start underscore code, right? Yes. Yeah. And in sections, now you will see that in sections, first and foremost, you will see the syntax. The left hand side is the input syntax. So this dot refers to what we call it as a location pointer, okay? Location pointer is means where your program will be pointing it to program code. So when the program starts, it's starting at this is going to be this. And it will not be decided by operating system. Like in the case when you write a mean in your C code, the entry point of the program is decided by the compiler. So, you know, they know that this will be the range of address which must be generated to run on a particular operating system like this. So compiler design, you know, keeping three things in mind, the processor architecture, then the operating system it is targeted to work on, and the kind of file format it will be designed to run on. Okay. So I'm trying to say here, this is my starting address, and then the code segment, so dot text segment, as you know already, yeah. is an input and colon, and the output is made as star in bracket dot txt. It means all the text segments, whether it's a PLT, whether it's a relocatable PLT, whether it's a relocatable text, whether it's just a text, all of them gets included as a part. Okay. Now, after the text segment, we are directly giving a break there. We are giving another location pointer to jump at another place, say it followed by some zeros. So it means the data segment will always start from the location like 800. So, you know, by having this kind of uh, input given to a C code, you would be able to leverage the, you know, the, the build advantage in the program, correct? It means you can influence the way the program or the code will be placed in, correct? Yeah. yeah. So let me show you that with an example. I think. Yeah. So now I'm going to say GCC and I'll be using minus C in my app.c. So first I'm compiling. And then I'm going to use a command LD. Now LD is a command which is used for linking or linker. And it uses the object file which you have, which is in this case .o and dash t. This capital T refers to the linker script which will be given as an input. So you now you're asking the this linker program or the loader program LD to place the parts of the code segment on certain sections, the data part in some certain sections, the BSS part in certain section, and so on and so on, okay? Mm -hmm. So you have to use your, the script, which in this case is my LD scripts, and space is not required in the work compilers by syntax. And then my output file in name is going to be say my app.exe, getting it? So the moment we run this code, what happens is you can see that there is a myapp.exe created for you. And now I want to run myapp.exe file. So result you can see here by saying echo on dollar question mark. Can you see that there is a value called as 100? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So what? why I have used this command echo dollar question mark Whenever a program runs, right, on a shell, yeah, the output value or return value of that, the last updated value, is usually stored in the special variable. This dollar question mark is a special variable provided by the shell where you can confirm what was the last value executed by a command. Okay. So that's a confirmation that 99 has been converted to 100. Yeah. We are not using printf. The moment you use printf, then it will start using the, uh, you know, the tool chain provided C runtime. Now what we are doing is we aren't using the tool chain based C runtime. 
In fact, we are providing our own linker script to decide where your program is running. You get that? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So if I have to access this, I can use something like read ELF dash H and then say my app dot exe. So this will give you very clarity about the entry point. Correct? Okay. Yes. Yes. This is the same thing which we have mentioned as a part in my section. Yes. Okay. In a way. So tomorrow if I want to influence, suppose if I have a flash area, which by code select is available at say five zero zero zero. I'll save the linker script to be five zero zero zero. And naturally I want to have a build also on that. So I will have the the command once again executed. And I'm just influencing the code is same, but as you can see now, the values change over here. Yes. Yeah. So I'm able to influence the way my entry point will uh, be placed for a particular program. So I can influence my exe to position myself wherever I want. Of course, doing this manually for hundreds of programs will be a bizarre, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it's very handy for you know special uh, applications which you have to accommodate at a unique location for some strategic region also, right? Maybe you don't want to have these are very secured app or some spy apps which you want to install and don't let other people know that where it is, okay? Okay. okay. So this is a technique. So I hope you got this as yeah. an extension. So this yeah. is without main? Or this is without main, you don't have a main, right? Yeah. yeah. Not many people know this uh, technique, but it is always very important for system engineers to know this. Okay. So I, you coming from a hardware background, definitely you will have these kind of, you know, comparisons. If you write some real, you know, iron codes, bare iron, bare metal codes, I think these will be really very helpful for you. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, now let's get into something more than this. So we'll talk about now, how do you manage large projects? Okay. And we call those large projects as a part of separately translated program or SPP. Now, separately translated programs are that the source code is a split across different files and there is only one main file, right? Yeah. So if you look at any large project, the main is the least uh, source code. If you look at the definition of main, it will hardly have one or two lines. Mm -hmm. which will be a call to some function, which is written in some other form, you know, source code. And then it keeps, you know, extending the implementation in different, different source code. So when you build the source code for a product or an application, uh, you really want to plan the part of what we call it as distribution and maintaining software. And how do you build a source code? How do you maintain a source code? And how do you, Distribute that source code. There are three different aspects for a developer. So sometimes developer do it, and sometimes you know the build team is dedicated for a, a such projects so that developers can focus on building algorithms, and the build team can focus on automating the build cycle. So you know we'll have a CI cycle connected. For example, nowadays we use uh, code uh, bases on Git and we plug that in with uh, Jenkins. So by using Jenkins, what we do is we perform a CI CD, right? So we have a continuous integration going on. And meanwhile, uh, in the previous uh, agile uh, or iteration, I ensure that, you know, whatever my uh, previous basic releases, that is our being accessed uh, through my repository to all my, you know, uh, developers simultaneously, right? So do you use any continuous integration tool right now in the builds? Um, no, Not but, really. Yeah, I mean, um, I heard um, Jenkins. Like, yeah, really yeah. Good. I think Ganesh is uh, heading that team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ganesh uses that in the areas, okay. if I remember. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, that, that's fair enough. 
Now let's say that we'll start at a very simple concept first. But the uh, easiest way to maintain very large program is that to split them across objects and combine all the objects to form some kind of a utility or library. So one of the idea of distributing the application in library is that it is a binary form and it, it, it can be consumed by any other application uh, without you need to expose the implementation. You know, so it's a fantastic encapsulation logic in C. So what I mean by this is I'll give you a header file and I will give you a DLL file or a shared object file. And you don't need to question me that, you know, how it has been implemented. So you ask me certain feature, I got that implemented and I'm just distributing it, right? Yeah. So that's also a strategy. And it helps, you know, to maintain them. So there's a directory here, libdemo, which I will get into to explain this concept. So I have an app.c file, which is my source code. And then I have my make file. Then I have my math.c, string.c, and util.c. These are some demonstration program, which I'll be using. Okay. Probably, yeah, I should. Shift directory here. All right. Uh, all right. Okay. I got flipped out. Yeah. So let me first and foremost explain that there are two kinds of library you can create. One is a static library, and the number one is a dynamic library. Yeah. Now, when you look at the static library, it's all about you know archiving all the definition or the utility in one folder kind of a thing, you know? And these static libraries gets, uh, gets uh, being, uh, you know, accessed in terms of, uh, 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 what do I say? It gets added as a part of your source code. So if you have say something like, you know, uh, some hundred A of a library designed by you, every EXE will have to, I have this 100K added on top of its budget. So if you have a memory budget of say, an application cannot go more than one meg, okay. Uh, a memory budget for an application cannot go more than one meg. Then you must seriously consider should it be a static library or a dynamic library. Because in static library, all the symbol will be added at the time of compilation or the build itself, okay. However, not in the case of the dynamic library. So first I will explain about how do you do this in Linux. So I'm going to create a directory called as slib, which will explain about the static library. And I'm going to copy these files like star.c to my slib directory. And I'll copy the header file to the slib directory. Let me descend to the slip directory. And now I'm gonna open up the source code. So first, the util.h file. Now, as you can see, the header file always, you know, have the declaration. As you can see, these are external methods, very clearly saying that these, there can be a bunch of thousand such functions inside a header file, and the definition can split across different source code. Got it? So now what I do is I just, uh, you know, we split this. And here, in, I edit and make this as string length. So I'll say string.c. And then I further, maybe just split this. And I say math.c. Okay. And I come this side. Then I further split this. And I make this code as I'm torsing. So it's clearly trying to explain you that this is my actual source code on the top directory. Yes. Yeah. Which is trying to include this header file. And this header file contains the prototype for how to use this SQR or string length. So function which returns an integer, function doesn't returns an integer, but takes some parameters. So it accepts an string, 
and it has a pointer which will be updated with the length. We will learn these all, you know, concepts of functions, the concepts of arrays, the concepts of structures in subsequent uh, sessions coming up. Okay. Today we'll finish the build so that, you know, yeah. uh, from the next week you are more geared up. I mean, maybe from tomorrow, let's start the language features also. So you start getting into, you know, the coding techniques also. Okay. Yeah. So now, you know, if, if, if I have to consume these libraries, uh, sorry, utilities, the definition of these utilities are in some other source code, as you can see. String.c has all the string implementation, and math.c is being planned for mathematical or numerical. Image can be planned for image based manipulation, and so on and so on. Yeah. So, now, how do I build this library? First, let's try to see without library, how do we design this? So, my obvious option will be app.c minus o, I need an exe. At the moment you see, there are some errors. Right, yeah. It's sorry. naturally, isn't it? Because there's no definition here. Yeah. So the cheapest option you can think of is just add these files. Something like this. And then you can run your ex. Result is the same. Okay. But in this case, the entire source code is being used for every build. Yes. Maybe you do not want, if you have 10,000, then you have to mention all the 10,000 source code like this. Mm -hmm. So it may not be a very good, you know, handy approach for this. Okay. Is where what we do is we try to create the split of the files and create libraries. So library, static library is an archiving utility and it's a combination of different files together. How do I create them? First I compile with now, wall stands for all the warnings must be notified. Because when you create a utility, you must ensure that minus or minorest of the warning is being addressed by you. Because it's a utility, you are going to ship it to somebody else, right? Okay. Yeah. So string.c, math.c. You can see minus c means compile only. So we've got the object files. Now what we do is we try to combine all these object files and we try to create an archive out of it. So I say AR is a command to create an archive. R stands for replace if at all similar name of this library exists in the same source code path. See, okay, the output in the thing, you know. So you will find the lib must be prefixed. So any library you create, whether it's a shared library or a static library, usually you will have this um, dot a and a dot so suffixed. So lib is prefixed and dot a and dot so is suffixed. Getting it? Okay. I mean, dot yeah. so is. Uh... For example, it's a convention. Linking convention, for example, every library will have lib prefix. Now, actual name of the library can be, say, for example, sutil. Okay. Sutil dot a. It means what? The actual library name is what? Sutil. Okay. But by the convention of naming, it lib is prefixed and dot a is suffixed. Oh, okay. That's a practice. This is to ensure that, you know, linking can be, you know, searched or by index, it can be performed, searched in, in, in the, you know, build process. You will see soon the usage of it. And now I'm going to say all the files, which is going to be a part of this library. So string dot and the map. So the moment I say this, you can see the library has been created here. I can say file lib. Current archive file. Now, if I want to know the list about this, I can use AR, say T, and then lib. So T is an option which will give me a list 
of all the object files of this library. Okay. I can delete some of them. I can say D method. And I can add them again you know, as a part of my thing. Something like this. So through archiving, we can add or subtract, you know, like say you found uh, five utilities, but suddenly you feel like, you know, one of the utilities is not well tested. I don't want to be, make it as a part of my life. So you can remove them. So we can add them later after testing has been done. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, how do you test this? It's very simple. You don't need the source code. So we'll say a test, SF or a static. So this is like a client library. Client will be given. I'll be copying the lib. And I'll be copying the header file, right? Let's say util.h. And I'll be also copying the app.c file. So as you can see now what we have, we have only the source code, yeah. header, and the archive file. Archive file. Library file, static library. So now building is very simple. I'll just say GCC app.c, my library name, and then output file, say be app.exe. And then you can run it as it is. So what are we seeing? By having the library, I have safeguarded my implementation, yes. right? Yeah. My entire implementation, which I did, is encapsulated. Yes. Right? I don't need to explain him how actually the definition of, you know, uh, string length is or, or SQR is. Of course, these are very trivial examples, but it can be applicable for my some copyright algorithms, right? Which can be very, it's like only the algorithm which I possess, right? Yes. Like an Amazon's business algorithm to find Okay, yeah. about the behavior of uh, buying uh, ability of a user, correct? Something like that. So, you know, that's done. Now, how do you automate all this stuff? You know, what you have seen is that we have been continuously writing the commands again and again. Correct? Yeah. So, to automate this build, we use the make system. And there are three kinds of build make. One is a GNU make, which is a recursive make system used. Okay. The second one is the C make, which is being used to ensure that, you know, uh, all the builds are actually built in a, only a build directory on a specific directory. Mm -hmm. And then the another one is called as, you know, auto configs or auto tools. It means you, try to create a tar file as a build structure and ship it to the end user. Okay. But okay. let's look at the default and the most obvious available build system called as the GNU build system. Okay. Now GNU build system consists of a mix command. Now what is a make command? It is a command to ensure it automates the build. And what it does, it searches for a make file in your current directory. So the moment I say make, it will try to maintain a group of the programs which it will do it by looking at a make file available on it. Mm -hmm. you know, if there are no make file, then by using minus F option, you can also mention your custom file which is re referred by the make commands. So, okay. So I just said man. So let's try to see if I say win make file. Now make file contain three major things. One of them is called as target. The other one is called as the dependency. And the third one is called as the commands or the rules to build a target. Okay. So any make file usually consists of these three things. One second. The first one is the target. 
Okay. The second one is the dependency to the target. And the third one is nothing but the rules or the commands to build the target. Now, what are the examples of targets? A target could be a library. A target could be a exe file. A target could be an object file. Target could be some image file. A target could be some other format of the file. Okay. Now, the moment you say my target is to build an exe file, what could be the dependency to create an exe? It means, do you need any library to create an exe file? Do you need any object to create an executable file? Do you need any other static utility to create an object exe file? Do you need certain security files to be added or scripts to have the particular exe file? All this comes as a part of what? Dependency. Now in a make file, we write the comment with hash or pound. Let's say make file. Comment line. So the language now, used in make file is it's 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 not C, right? I mean, they have it's not C. It's not C. It's like a scripting language, you know. Yes. Yeah, very very similar to scripting language. But the whole idea of Makefile you will see is they use a typical macro programming language. We call it as M4. Okay. M4. I don't know if you have come across. It's very uh, old way of expanding the expression the way you want to. You know? They heavily use on M4. Okay. So now, you know, first is to understand some special rules of this. So target must be named. For example, I can give some target I called as say an app.ex. I can use a colonizer to say that's my target. Okay. And after giving a space, which is a must as a rule, I can specify the dependency for exe. It means what does it take to create this exe? Who are those files which are related? So for my exe, as of now, if I have app.o, which is your object file, that's sufficient. But then we know it also needs a library. So my library is what? Lib s util dot a. Yes. It means as long as I have the object file in the library, mm -hmm. it is enough for me to create an exe. Now, how do I create an exe? You press enter after the de dependency and use a tab. Tab is a very important aspect. It's a rule. It's like a syntax in Makefile. Okay. And then you write the actual command. So here I can say GCC and then app.o and then I can use lib util.a and my object file is going to be what? app.o exe okay okay now okay where am i here i'm going to come out of this and if i say make where is the test static library yeah Oh, I think the make file is somewhere else. Yeah, it's here. So if I say something like make, it says make is up to date. Why? Because app.ex is already created. So make uses a time stamping and the dependence. If ex is already there, it will not repeat this. Now, if you compare a make file with a script, it will not do this. Script will keep running the same command again and again. So if I have 15 build commands, it will run all the 15 one by one, despite your build is over. It doesn't matter. For example, if you have 10,000 files and they have to be compiled, okay? okay. Assume that they are already pre-compiled and kept it. Script file will again keep compiling, again and again. Every time you run, it will compile all the 10,000. But make will not do that. Make sees that 
in the current file system, it will keep a track of whether these object files are already available. And if it is, it simply ignores them. Now, how do we test them? I'm going to remove this app.exe here and then run this. Do you see what happened? Yeah. It realized that app.exe is not there now. It creates that. So then I need to run only that set of things. Now, you know, to take the multiple iterative style for this, okay, we will further edit the make file. I don't know, where was it? Okay, it's here only. Yeah. I'll say we make file. Now, you know, we can also think of running the another part. Like, how do you get, what if the app.object is not there? Suppose if object is not there, then you require app.cn util.h. It means this header file and this C file is needed for creating an object, right? If you don't have the source code, how do you get the O file? And then I can say gcc minus c dash wall and then app dot c. So I'm just compiling this file. Why I've used util dot h so that the header file must be also distributed as a part of my directory. Okay. Now, what about if lib util dot a is not there? You know, this naming convention on left hand side is not necessary to write this, you know, dot exe dot o in there. You can give any other name, you know. Okay. friendly names okay. just for syntax uh, you know just to technically explain you once that how the code is flowing once it is hard coded you can replace this by any level you want right okay. yeah yeah so now what are the dependency for this uh, static library tell me you need a string dot o and a man dot o Util, uh, yeah, Util is uh, the header file. It is the header file. Yeah. Now I'll use RCS, Archive Utility. Mm -hmm. I will create the file name and this will include both, both the math.o mm -hmm. and the string.o. Mm -hmm. Now imagine if a string.o is not available, then what do you do? You need a string.c. C, okay. Right, so I will have a string dot. In fact, we can use wild characters also, you know, where all multiple source code can be compiled together also by using macros, which you can easily do it. Okay. So now I'm going to say math.o, and here myself needs a math.c, and here also I'll be changing. Oh, oh. I can also do something like make clean. Okay, no dependency. And I'll say RM minus RF star dot O star dot A and star dot EXE. Of course, we shouldn't do a star dot star because the source code will also be jeopardized. Yeah. So just by doing this now, we can definitely verify when I say make. You know, it is already aware that EX is there. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Yeah. Now I'm going to say rm app.exe. And then I'm going to say make. You see what happened? As expected. It only compiled that. Yeah. Now I'm going to say rm app.exe and do one thing, also delete the library also. And then I'm going to run app. Hey, smart enough, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It will run only those commands which is sufficient to reach your goal of app.exe. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. If I say make clean. It removes everything. Okay. And then I say make. 
it was pretty smart enough to go step by step yeah and build all of it yeah. now you know sometimes these make files also require some you know uh, flexibility usually so we can think of uh, like you do not want the users to see what kind of commands are being run right you saw here whenever you run mm -hmm. say make clean and make again so now you can see that you know uh, it cleans up and then runs all the commands but you do not want the users to know what is the command being executed okay yeah these rules you want to hide okay mm -hmm. So what you do is usually use a command called as act. Act command is prefixed to hide the command. Oh, okay. Rather, you can say something like echo, and you can see making the exc. And maybe done. If you don't give at in echo, what happens is echo command also will appear. So which we want to avoid, we can say here. Okay. At echo. I just don't want to print anything here. I don't want to show that these things are at all there. Okay. I can't write the slangs, but at least. Okay, let's see the impact of this. Make, so I'll run the previous command, make clean, make. Okay, there are some errors now, let's debug them. First, it does not understand that line number zero, sh. So, a syntax. That is perfectly fine. I think somewhere here, this mod is a special variable. So it's trying to tell that. No? Okay. What is that? Okay. Yeah. So now, can you see it's, it's actually been make clean? Yeah, so in clean command, there is a problem. There is a problem, yeah. So we want RF and all. Okay. <coughs> See, double quotes is not ended. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. That was fine. <coughs> That's fine. Mm -hmm. So what do you see? Do you see those commands now anymore? No, it's, it's all uh, hidden. It's just hide it, yeah. So that's the technique. See, if I would have not used this at, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes in the build system, you must be saying, okay, making clean, removing this, mm -hmm. creating libraries now, please wait, all those nonsense will come. Okay. 
So I'll say make uh, green and then I'll say make. And you see what it says is there are two times this message coming. Mm -hmm. It is showing that what command you run and the output of that command is also being seen. You see? It? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Echo so you, and then a message. Building. Okay. Yeah. Just because I didn't give an act at line number 11. You see? Oh, okay. okay. So act is to avoid the commands. Now, you know, you want to make this program more portable. So what you could do is say, you can say something like CC is equal to GCC. Mm -hmm. AR is equal to AR. You know? Okay. And then wherever you find GCC, so now we can do a search, search for GCC and replace that with a special variable CC. Why? 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 Now, wherever you find an AR, where you replace that with capital A. This is to check the confirmation. Say why? That was wrong. So I have to come out and say you. I have to skip the first one. Yeah, this is correct. So now can you see this is called as variables, using as variables in make files. So without any space, the moment you, you can use any symbol, some standard symbols like CC means GCC, some compiler, mm -hmm. CPP means C++ compiler, like that. So what is the command? So CC is this, wherever CC is there, see dollar in bracket, it means it will dereference that value. Okay. It means CC will become GCC. Mm -hmm. So special macros via which in make file a variable can be interpreted. Okay. Okay. What's the advantage of this? You can make this program more portable. For example, if I say make CC is equal to just CC, I will say make clean first. And now if I say make uh, yeah, you know, I have to show you one more thing because I have shut off all the commands. You might not see which command and the impact of this command. I'm just going to remove these, you know, act from these commands just to show you the impact. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I would say make and my variable name is cc and I can say just cc. Now, can you see what's happening? Another C compiler with CC is being used. Unix style C compiler. Okay. Getting it? I mean, that's because GCC is replaced with CC? Uh, exactly. You got that. So tomorrow I can say something like GCC. So again, I'll have to clean this. Make clean. You can see that? What's happening? Yeah, yeah. Now tomorrow, I... Hello? Hello. I think the, the screen. Hang on. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, no, now I can hear uh, Animesh. It was it was hung for some I time. I think we got. Yeah, I think it got just uh, disconnected or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I think there is some bandwidth issue from my side. Maybe. No. No problem. Maybe. The thing is, you know, if it has a bandwidth issue from either of the side, yeah, it can be a problem. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 
just bear with me sure yeah, yeah. so i was trying to you know explain, explain you your... on the cross period so oct and so free um um then so here i may have a bin so you see what i would do is i will say make clean mm -hmm. and make cc is equal to this got it okay and then run the program now you see what happened file app dot exe i built it for the arm architecture so i used the cross tool chain same make file different build oh okay 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 got it huh? yeah i can't run this program here it won't run i need a binary a hardware arm hardware or at least an arm emulator like qmu or something mm -hmm. got that yeah so i'm just trying to explain that how we can you know make the make file portable okay so you know only the build commands like this will change and then you know it can make it for the same code application can build for arm same code can be built for mips same can be built for x86 and so and so on right okay thank you and uh, of course that uh, yeah you want to say something so uh, i mean in a whole build system there is going to be a main file a make file exactly there are many different i mean i have seen that you must have seen yeah, yeah. so it means what you know how do you now there is a technique Yeah. of recursively making a make one make file from the another make file it's like you know one directory structure which is a master directory structure which is the outer source code this code has distributed you know plans for a binary distribution mm -hmm. so when a source code is being written by all of us in parallel we also think that you know how do we package the entire distribution so the outer directory should contain what the that is a first make file so the moment we run a make file this make file should call what the another make file and that make file should call what the another make file so you know it's possible by saying mm or yeah okay. mm yeah. or just m to say that you know in which layer of directory you are trying to perform the build which is in build commands okay in the build system okay. i'm sure while you're building android also uses a c make file correct Yes. Yes. So in CMake, you must have seen that it dis descendants make files across directory structure has an outer make file, correct? Yes. And that may internally be calling the another source code make file. So you specify the paths over here when you run different make files. Okay. So I'll share you another source code where you have multiple make files. Okay. Okay. And then you know we can dissect that. Probably a libpng dot and a project is there with me. Okay. Uh, which i wish to share it for you probably you should first uh, go through it and tell yeah. me what is that code doing and then you know explain that okay okay yeah but to an overall extent i am sure that you got the feel of what an oh, automated yes. make is yes i got the concept yeah 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 then yeah now i think time for us to get into the another utility so this brings up to an understanding about the static library automating certain aspects of my you know code builds mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. let's move to now the dynamic uh, uh, library okay dynamic library is a little bit tricky because it's the gcc it does not adds all the source code object files together in an exe mm -hmm. okay it gets stored in a unique memory location at the time of either you start the program or you load an application or you postpone the loading of an application scenarios three are there so one is like you know you are using some standard library and that's any way to be postponed at runtime so absolutely what 
happens is that you know when the kernel is coming up it helps us to load a lot of libraries in prior to when we log in right the whole idea is that all the services should be up and running so that whenever any application runs these you know functionalities are available so i don't need to go and do a demand loading every time because you know it can uh, have a slower start for an application so reload all the shared services so that you know whenever a request comes through an external event the application is quickly launched and user experience is also better right so to build a static uh, sorry the dynamic library we use a different technique here so i am going to create a uh, make header and then i'll say d while lib dynamic lib and then what i do is i again copy the nat.c and string.c and app.c probably utils.h to my dialive now we'll get into this dialive i'll leave you know this directory as an assignment for you to write the make file for this okay. if you get some time yeah okay sure. yeah so first the compilation here is uh not about this the app that is anyway going to remain the same and majorly the compilation of this program is important so all the object files which will be a part of shared object must be compiled with a unique switch called as fpic now pic stands for position independent code okay and it is required not today but for the older you know utilities and libraries and loaders so you know old environment doesn't didn't have this you know all the codes uh, were not position independent some of them were pretty you know pre planned and they had some unique addresses known to us okay but now fp is not required for both. only for backward compatibility we use this switch so that the code is position independent it means it can be loaded anywhere at run time while linking has to be performed okay so take care to take an advantage of dynamic linking this is what we perform so i'll use string.c and math.c to be a part of this now gcc itself is used there is no command note uh, for creating a dynamic library so i can't use an archive command kind of thing okay I use the gcc itself with an option called as shared and then i give the library name so i can say lib say dy lib dot so file and then i can give string dot on map dot saying that you know they are going to be a part of my library of course with minus shade i have to give the output file name of the library and now you can see the dynamic library so dynamic library cannot execute on itself but it is an elf file remember okay so if i say read elf dash h lib dynamic lib it very clearly says that it is a shared object file only the problem is i cannot say run this although it is an exe file dynamic library cannot run on its own it needs to be linked against some entry point correct mm -hmm. okay. yeah. as you can see the entry point of this completely is different than what our main could be it has to be loaded by somebody somebody should execute them and map them into the memory mm -hmm. you can know the dependency of the libraries also because after all it's an exe kind of style right it has a binary information and ld.so command you know in the older unix machines used to provide this manual loading of the you know library which now has been automated by ld configs which i'm going to shortly explain you okay. yeah now after the library is done you would definitely want to link this library so app.c for o and minus o app.exe 
it's uh, error now i will add the library but the moment i want to run this application.exe you can see there's some error <clears throat> cannot open the shared object file no such file at all the reason is you have linked the library for your exe so the definition is resolved it knows that there is a definition here in this file correct yes yeah are you there yeah yeah, yeah. so i was saying by looking at this by giving this definition you know linking is passed so exe is created but there is a load time problem you know when you run this exe file what happens is there is a file called as dynamic linker how do i know this i say ldd app dot ex so this is the program which is called as what the dynamic linker okay the role of a dynamic linker is to search for all the so files available in the standard path mm -hmm. so what it does it finds the standard libraries like gate so files and all but it does not know where your library is which you have recently created correct okay yeah. and hence it says here not found okay so so how do you do this i need to teach the dynamic linker that this is my path where this library so there's an environmental variable provided to support this called as ld underscore library underscore path to say that hey my library is in the current directory and run this application and now you can see it does not gives you that load error so the idea is that whenever an exe runs the exe will be first and foremost executing a program called as what dynamic linker yeah right if you remember yesterday i spoke about dynamically <coughs> linked application and statically linked application in dynamically linked application we spoke about three minimum dependencies the gate library <coughs> the c runtime library and we also spoke about the dynamic linker itself here the ld linux so this is an example of what dynamic linker okay yeah what is the role of dynamic linker to resolve and search in the current path or in a virtual file system it will search for all the so files available okay and that is which is required by your exe correct see in the linking you are saying no this library is also needed correct yes but the problem is this is not a part of my standard library hence i need to explicitly specify the path and run it does not resolve to it just runs this on this particular command and that's it after that the next session again it is gone so how do i achieve this usually we use a command called as export okay okay so we export the path exporting in a shell up means that on this entire session application can be tested okay. you can see that yes yes okay yeah like this now now some I people do what you it. understand it <laughs> yeah 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 so and sometimes what people will do is they will you know now see the problem here the moment i open one more terminal now i have to become a su Demo. 
and dialing. Yeah, I'm back here. So if you look at, you know, LDD app.exe, mm -hmm. again, the same problem. Correct. So, you know, by exporting, what happens? You're only available to a particular shell or the terminal. Another terminal cannot have it. Mm -hmm. Some people, what they do is as a developer, they'll put into an RC file. You know, when you log in, in your home directory, there is an RC file, which we call it as a profile file. So these people, they will write this command there. So the same thing will be written in a RC file. Something like this. This is a bash RC file. Mm -hmm. So they will write, you know, the, all the, you know, uh, basic path over there and so and so on. Okay. But that's not the correct way. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is only to test for you. What about if hundreds of people wants to log in and use the same library? Yeah. Yeah. It's not possible mm -hmm. because that, that is only your environment and your file. So your profile means it is only Venus has logged in and only Venus shells can have an access to all this library. That's not production. Yeah. So the idea is if your library is well tested, see it is all planned. They don't want to see the moment you make a library, it should not be that without testing, everybody is having an access to that. And if library has a bug, it will create a havoc in the entire code base. Correct. Right. So the plan is okay. First, let the session wise or a particular shell be available so that you can perform enough testing, you know. Now, once you have, it's like incremental development. Once you are tested with your library and you see it is good. Now you go for what? Production ready. So how do you make your library production ready? By adding them to a standard path. It is a file called as etc. Etsy contains major of the configurations on Linux or Android boxes. And uh, Etsy has a directory called as ld.conf. Okay, Etsy. Sorry, sorry. Okay. CD. ld.so.conf.d okay. and if I run this you will see there's a lot of configuration files there Correct. what this file contains is the path where your library standard libraries are as you can see user local lib is a directory which must be referred by dynamic linker to find out the libc file. Okay. Similarly, there is a symbolic link also. If you see I386 kind of stuff, GNU, GL, it says go into an architecture specific directory and MESA architecture is there. You refer to this file, which has the configuration. It means MESA library should be referred. So if I want to make it production ready, what we should do, we can also create a file like this. I can say vim etsy ld.so.conf.d and here I'll make say my dy lib.conf. Remember conf is important. Okay. So this is a standard path. I mean, it has to standard be standard path. Most of the Linux, yeah, most of the Linux distribution will have this as a standard path. Okay. Yeah. Typically, on you know Red Hat and all, they might change for security. You know, because nowadays, too, you know, if the person knows the directory structure, it is also a problem. Okay. So we want to randomize our root file system distribution. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, people know, you know, oh. Whenever I get a root file system, there will be a bin, there will be an S bin, there will be an OPT. So these people start writing program which targets those directory. Because they assume that there will be an Etsy directory. Okay. Right? Yeah. So attacks are more and you know, nowadays it's so vulnerable no, in connected systems. Yeah. Earlier embedded systems were good because we were living in isolation, right? Yeah. 
so because you are not connected nobody is curious about you <laughs> correct <laughs> now you are connected on internet so everybody wants to snipe you that okay who are you and what are you doing can i make money out of this box or not <laughs> So everybody is a suspect also and a prospect also. I mean, <laughs> from the perspective, but we are yeah. So I mean, you know, let's get into this uh, configuration file. And now I'll give my path. So I need to know where is my path. So I'll say pwd. This is where my path is. So I'll have to. have this path I think the space is going to be a big problem for us yeah and then we'll say uh, sudo Oh, no, no, not even so. I can directly run a command called as ld config. And now, if I say ldd app.exe, oh, it's not yet found. So, I have a path challenge. You know, so what I'm trying to do is here actually, this dynamic library is into a different uh, file system. You know, Google Drive is my, mm -hmm. my Mac file system. Okay. Okay. And Mac file systems path is a different file system. So because of that, the path is not resolved here. Mm -hmm. Okay, but let me show you. Yeah, let me show you this with a quick example. What I can do is I will take this directory for a second from here and move this to say um, to a different place, say home. ALP, some, okay, ALP directory. Oh, what do I want to copy? I want to copy this DY. And I'll come out from here and I'll get into that home ALP. And now if you see, there will be a dialib directory, correct? Yes. Okay. I'll get into this dialect. And naturally, if I want to run this app.exe, as of now, it understands because we set the, the path. So I can say LDD uh, app.exe in the current path. Correct? Correct. Yes. But you know that if I open this into an, another terminal and run this, Okay, again, I need to become a sudo. And I need to descend down to home and LP. And I need to get into die DL. It's a problem, right? Yes, not finding that. Okay. Yeah, so now what we do is we try to fix that path problem. Okay, it's not here. Where was the file? Yeah, here. We run a whim here, right? No. Let's see. L D dot SO dot cont dot D and then we'll get into my daily. I need to delete this path and I need to take another path here, which is this. Copy this, come back, paste here. Okay, I should be in the edit mode. There you go. So the moment I say this and say LD config, and now if I say LDD anywhere, can you see what happened? Yeah. 
It's yes. updated to the path. Okay. So now it is production ready, system wide ready. Anywhere you can run. You run here. You open another terminal. You go to home, ALP, dial A. Okay, I have to get it as a sudo because I was a root user. Yeah. And I'm trying to get inside without a sudo, so it is not allowing me. So I have to be a root user. And now if I run here also, it's fine. Can you see that? Yes, yes. Not only here. I mean, if you have logged in as another user also, it is fine because now it is updated in the cache. Oh, okay. You can look at the cache by saying ld config dash p. And you can grip, say, dy lay dot s o. Is there? Yes. Correct? Yeah. yeah. So that gives you, you know, view of, you know, how do you maintain the static library and dynamic libraries in yeah. the system. Okay. So I yeah. hope you you got some view about the yeah, library this, creation. This was um, really helpful. I mean, yeah. I, I was not having a full picture. Yeah, yeah. So at least, you know, it will cover that entire circle when you are building the application, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And there are a lot of more details, you know, which I'm trying to refrain right now because see, we have another thing also, which we need to focus on is that language coding features also. Mm -hmm. But before you go to language features, at least, you know, the one build aspects, if it is clear, I yeah. think it becomes more easier for you to write flow, fluid codes. You know? yes. right. Yeah, so I mean, that's uh, roughly about all this. Yeah. And for further reading on make, I mean. Yeah, so now what I'm going to do is, you, you see at the, the drive, right? Yeah. We have in the drive placed the reading for make, see make and this. So I will be covering some of them, you know, because we are focusing on C programming, right? So not on the Linux environment and Linux build. Okay. We are refraining to speak, but there are some reference I have placed it for you. Okay. Now let me show you that and on this here drive and yeah here if you look at this here i've given some auto tools um which which, which folder uh, this is into auto tools as a part of build with code Okay. Yeah, auto tools. Yeah. Yeah. And then they have an add-on directory where I've explained about, you know, auto book. Um, this book, this book ex itself explains about all the automation of the, you know, uh, it's a whole book in HTML format, which you can read it offline. I mean, um, with, about the make file. So I, in the auto tools, I see, I mean, it's directly under auto tools. Um, uh, no, you have to get into build with code. Can you get into the build with code? I, you want to share your I, screen maybe? I'll guide yeah, you. I'll share my screen. Now. Yeah, yeah. I can guide you with it, right? Yeah. yeah, so not here. This is an example to try it out. We'll go to build with code, uh, add-ons on top. Add-on, sorry. Okay. Yeah. So here, auto book. Yeah. Okay. And any one of the HTML file, if you open. Uh, I, I don't think so. You can open the HTML file like this. <laughs> you have to. I mean, you have to download the directory or open with some Chrome or something. Yeah. HTML, no, 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 you become a developer. He's trying to make you a developer. Don't do that. Okay. Yeah. It means, you know, download this directory. There's a dot, dot, dot. You know how to download Triple dot. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll download it. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And then if you open that in your, you know, any HTML, mm -hmm. there it will look something very similar. I'll just show you here. Okay, hang on. 
Uh, how do I share my screen? Okay, I think you have to stop sharing me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, something like this, you know, if you I'm just trying to close the tab and show you something like this, you know, I'm in build with code. I went to add ons, okay. auto book 1.5. Any one of the auto book HTML, if you see, you'll open up. You can go to table of contents. Okay, okay, sure. This is about, you know, going more for far that how you can, you know, automate your, you know, entire build process and all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It will help you that. But yeah. still, you know, if you really want to know a little bit more on the build activities and all, a lot of videos and links are there, which I can, you know, forward. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But don't, I mean, uh, take too much. Uh, yeah. Maybe you can sp uh, split this in, say, weekly once or twice kind of uh, effort right now. Okay. Rather focus on the coming two weeks only on you know the the programming aspects of it. Now yeah. you need to get into coding techniques. Okay? Agree. Yes. Yes. And then we can come back again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. so, you know, uh, Venu, I wanted to take an early break today, maybe. Sure. Sure. And we'll keep the session here. Logically, it concludes the session over here for the okay. build aspects. Okay. Okay. So we'll keep it over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Try to write a make file on lib, uh, you know, dynamic library and see if you can do it, if you get some chance. Sure, yeah. Second, there is some note which you have to read. In add-on, there is a particular file called as linkers and loaders, PDF. Okay. Again, let me share you this. The screen. In the same add-on file, if you look at. Okay. You will find this. This is a fantastic book. I had a hard copy of this. Oh, okay. One of my friends stole it, never gave it back to me. <laughs> Thanks to the PDF versions. Yeah. Our life and fantastic book here, yeah, you know? Yeah. This explains about the way linkers and loaders go. System engineers you know, who want to take the manual control, you know, even hackers love to read kind, these kind of books. Because mm -hmm. if you know these kind of internal information, you know, you can crack the system also, and you can take advantage of writing very effective codes as well. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely read this. <laughs> yeah. Really so this becomes a very you know, huge reference. Again, I should not overwhelm you with so many data that uh, practically it is not possible. Yeah. Now, you know, when you learn about shared library, yeah, when you learn about shared library, two concepts are very important. PLT and GOT. Okay. Procedural link table and the global objective. So I have given a note on that, PLT underscore GOT. Okay. So the key to code the sharing and dynamic level. Okay. So one small example I have taken and you can try step by step so that you can understand that how this position independent code works. Typically hardware guys know, they don't like directly accepting anything. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Yeah. So, so there has to be some, you know, uh, concept which can explain them. Okay. This is how a software is extending our, you know, ability. Okay. Yeah. So I placed it. If you get some chance, not now, maybe in the weekend or something, you can read them. Okay. Sure. Yeah. 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 So I, I think let's keep the session today over here, bringing to the end of the build. Tomorrow we'll start with extremely basic understanding about the programming structures. Then also so we'll learn about, different types of declaration, impacts of declaration, loopings, and other things, okay. but more in terms of time and space crunch uh, manner for embedded. I'm okay. sure you yeah. like them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Animesh. Thank you very much. Yeah. Sure then. Okay. Let's catch you tomorrow and then good night. Okay. See you tomorrow. Good night. Thanks. Okay. Bye.